Hello everyone, we're going to start in a couple of minutes. Uh, just waiting for everyone to join. Okay. Red, green, blue, RGB. This is how in web application you specify the color of any element. So we need to figure out what's what the exact RGB value of this square. So we right click on it, click inspect, and we can see that this is an image, right? It would have been easier if it was a, like a regular HTML element, but it is an image and we cannot just figure out what the color is. But luckily, luckily, uh, there is a color picker that comes with uh, Chrome developer tools. You just need to choose any color property anywhere where you see, it, right? You click on it, it shows you color picker dialog. You click on this, mouse it over, and click anywhere on this image. It shows you a hexadecimal value of this color, which is zero, zero cafe. There are like a few words that can be from uh, hexadecimal characters and uh, cafe will be our answer. We copy it as usual and paste it here, cafe and submit. Continue to the next step. Okay, uh, now it's going to be a little more complicated, but also at the same time, a little more useful. So we have a button here. Uh, as most of you know that buttons use via Ajax, a technology that can send something to the server and get an answer without reloading the page. It's very useful. You don't want to reload the page because it's a bad user experience. So how do you see what is being sent to the server, what server answers and everything? We also open uh, developer tools, click F12, here it is, and you go to the network tab. First of all, you don't want to see all the files that are already loaded. You click uh, clear button and it's empty. Now, go back to your web browser and click me button backs to be clicked on. That's what we do. Go back to developer tools. And when you see a new entry here, named button handler. In PHP, it's button handler.php. In asperiner.net, it will be just button handler. There's no extension. We click on it and we see things like headers, payload, and everything. So the first thing we need to check is the uh, response. This is what uh, our server sent us. And it says step five, curious. So this is our hint. But before we proceed further, let me show you how it works, right? Where it's, uh, this curious is coming from. First of all, this is a JSON format. So we send data to server and uh, from the server in JSON format. This is like the, like this is like XML, but it's much easier to use. And when we're talking about sending data to and from JavaScript, it usually be in JSON format. So, is uh, my uh, Peach Piranha project that I use to build this application and we go to event screen click me button and on the server size this is a standard code that allows you to send something from the server side code to client after event this is it very simple and And it appears here and in our 
JavaScript client after code, we can use something like this. If we needed to do something with it, there will be like variable named result and the result of step five would have the value of curious. We don't need to do anything with it right now. I'm just like explaining how things work. And the response is where we see what's coming from the server. So now we just copy URS, go back to our browser and paste it here. So submit, our answer is correct and continue to the next step. Okay, this is something that is, again, is slightly more complicated, but again, slightly more useful. So there is, uh, we're talking about some sort of error, right? Let's see what we got here. Uh, just in case we clear everything on the network tab and console tab, so it's empty. Click the button and open the console again. And we can see the error. There's some sort of an error here. Uh, luckily, it uh, show us where exactly that error happens. So we click the source file on the right side. And it shows us the source code of this button. There is a bunch of additional code that each runner adds. And the actual code that your code that you add to phprunner or sprunner.net is just these two lines. And this is our code. You can see that error happens here. It says uh, ground code is not defined. That is correct because we don't have a variable named ground code. And uh, since this is the text value, uh, it is supposed to be wrapped by single or double quotes. Let me show you the code where it comes from. So it's a button named, you know what to do. Okay, that's our code. Groundhog is not available. If it was available, it's probably the code probably run as expected, but it's not available. It, uh, it was supposed to be text, but someone supposedly forgot to uh, add double quotes around it. If we click check syntax, it compiles, by the way. Uh, it compiles. Why? Why does it work? It's like it. The thing is that syntax checker doesn't know if groundhog is available or is it an error. It's uh, the thing is this code on its own may not work, but after you add it to the main project, it will work if groundhog variable was defined somewhere else. So the syntax checker is only able to check the syntax, but it doesn't know if we have such a variable or not, uh, which means sometimes syntax checker is not that useful and uh, you need to compile your project and you need to run it in the actual web browser to see if it works or if it doesn't work. Anyway, uh, so we can try and copy groundhog as our answer. And I'm doing this on purpose and it doesn't work. Why? We need to go back and take a closer look at the code. Okay, uh, let's go back to the console, right? And we see there is one more line of code that adds uh, something else to Groundhog. So it was supposed to say Groundhog Day with the space Right, so we can go back here, name. So type in Groundhog Day. I'll post it in the chat. 
and submit. Okay, perfect, perfect. So every time you do something and you don't see any errors on the page, but something doesn't work, some button doesn't work, some, fun some other functionality doesn't work. First thing you check, you go to developer tools, open the JavaScript console and see if there are any errors here. It's extremely useful technique and anything goes wrong, you go there first. That's the first thing you do. Like if something, anything doesn't work as expected. So SQL injection is also like a very common, this is probably number one threat if your web application, number one vulnerability. And if you just use the built-in functionality of PHP runner or ASP.NET, you don't need to worry about it because it's already been taken care of. But if you add your code, you need to make sure that any input that comes from the user, you cannot trust it. It can be some malicious code there that if you add it to your SQL query as is, it may edit or delete some data, it may retrieve data that this user is not supposed to see, etc. I will show you exactly how it works and I will also show you the code that is the bad code and what is the proper way to avoid this vulnerability.